Oh, ring, name, rank, and serial number. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Ron Whitehurst. I'm uh, one of the co-owners with my wife, Jan Dietrich, of Rincon by Tobin Sactories. So we uh, were working with her parents who, who started the business in about 1950 to produce beneficial insects to help farmers uh, control pests in the fields to get off of the, the toxic pesticides. We're not totally against pesticides. Soap and water makes a dandy pesticide, and you just don't get it in your eyes and don't drink too much, and you're fine. But we don't need any of the toxic pesticides. And now there is um, uh, people growing all the crops in California. That's about 400 different crops. Uh, Organically, so that means with beneficial insects, with uh, soft pesticides, and uh, without any uh, really toxic, highly hazardous materials. And so, if we can do that for um, uh, all of these crops, why are we still using these toxic pesticides? So, uh, I was on the um, Sustainable Pest Management Work Group to come up with a plan to get off of toxic pesticides. And we came up with a lot of good ideas, and they're out there, but um, no ambition. And so we've been pushing you know, to, to uh, implement all these good ideas to reduce pesticide use in, in our state. So um, we live in the, the middle of the stinking Ventura oil field. So for us, getting off of fossil fuels is personal. That, um, uh, Every day there's these oil pumpers and they put off uh, BTEX, benzene, ethyl benzene, toluene, and xylene, and uh, make people sick. And they use herbicide to keep the dust down, so when the dry winds come, they pick up the herbicide-laden dust, it gets in our lungs, and gives us problems breathing. And so we know from experience, we need to get off of this fossil fuels. And uh, we don't like the idea of, you know, voluntary simplicity and, and suffering, you know, to have a better environment. We look at what are all the things that we can live a better life, better quality of life, and enjoy life more without uh, fossil fuels and without the, the dangerous uh, electricity like 5G and all these other things. So, um, so we. Uh, rehabbed our 1920s era uh, home to implement a lot of these things. And one of the, the crown jewels that we uh, came up with was this through the wall solar oven. So we, um, uh, I pulled up the information from Paul Funk on his designs for a through the wall cooker. He works with the Kerr Center and um, uh, assembled out of mostly uh, recycled wood. And so um, I think the total cost was something in the neighborhood of $100, $150 um, from you know, scrap materials that we had left over from construction and that nice scavenge sure. and so on. And so um, it's big enough for Two sheet pads oh side goodness. by side, which is one of the ideas that, uh, that Paul had suggested. If you're going to do it, do it big yeah, enough that's... so you can cook some stuff. You want to have guests over, you know? And we have all these wonderful uh, granite ware pans that we pick up from the thrift stores sure. that are uh, really good. They uh, are blocks, they, they absorb the heat, and, but they don't. Uh, 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 it doesn't take a lot of heat to heat them up because it's just real thin iron. And so really good for cooking and you don't need much water, of course. Um, and the vegetables that we cook in those pans in here um, come out like they're roasted. And so it's really, really yummy stuff. So we got to show you here two sheet pans side by side, easy in, easy out. And so um, we can uh, dry a lot of fruit in here. Um, uh, I've been culturing some mushrooms in the garden. And so um, when I have uh, just 
way too many mushrooms. I don't have. Uh, we also do farmer, uh, farm, local farmers market, and um, uh, when I'm not able to use them, they they decompose rather quickly. Uh, I just slice them up, throw them in here, and uh, dry them, and then they're stable for I don't know four or five years, maybe as long as the bugs don't get into them. And then um, uh, another feature is I um, want to have this um, uh, black painted uh, interior so that when the sun comes in, it heats it up. So it's kind of like a uh, convection uh, heating. And so we've got the, the direct heating from the sun, the radiant heating from the, the sun coming through the glazing. Um, and then um, uh, have the convective heating. And so uh, I use this cage material. It's, um, it's half by about two inch um, uh, squares of uh, iron wire. And uh, it's really nice because it has these nice wires on it that the, the pans slide, slide oh, yeah. in very yeah, nicely. Directionally, too. Yeah. 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 So that um, I have the, the cross pieces on, on down so that there's just this nice smooth surface. And you get a little you know, wear and tear on the, uh, um, on the top surface of the wire, but the, the, the finish on the um, uh, aluminum, it's uh, aluminum glazing, you know, like you use uh, for covering sure. areas on the roof. So uh, inexpensive material. The main uh, construction is half-inch uh, external plywood, and um, the main body of the um, cooker is uh, two-inch polyiso foam uh, with a, a layer of uh, half-inch uh, plywood on either side, so that it's structural and uh, well insulated. Uh, so it's well insulated. And then uh, for the glazing on the inside, I used a tempered glass, I think it was like part of a sliding glass door oh, for sure. a shower enclosure or something like that. I picked it up at uh, ReStore. It's a recycled materials store that, that um, uh, is a, supports uh, Habitat for Humanity. And um, so I picked up like, Five ten bucks or something. Sure. <laughs> and then on the outside, then I have a layer of polycarbonate. So I was concerned that the you know things might fall on it and and uh, break that. So uh, got like a um, eighth inch polycarbonate. Then uh, that um, uh, is the external one. Sure. And it's gotten a little um, uh, foggy and such, but uh, um, it's still working. So um, I haven't. Uh, done uh, uh, that much as far as enhancing the collection. Um, one time I was thinking about putting a mirror uh, on the vertical surface above this um, and then um, uh, I've got some materials and, and plans for putting uh, side wings uh, that you could adjust sure. you know, seasonally to bounce more light from the sides into the main uh, uh, area of the glazing. And um, uh, haven't got that done. And so we get about uh, 220 uh, degrees cooking temperature. And so it doesn't seem like it's very hot, but it's enough to pasteurize water and cook veg and, um, uh, and that sort of thing. So this was a, a significant upgrade in our lives. We, um, we're going through this very busy time of building the company and keeping it from going bankrupt. You know, the first uh, item of, of business for a business is staying in business and <laughs> not going, <laughs> paying the bills and so on. So we went through this intense about 10 years of, of, um, of focusing on the business and, and we would uh, have a hot plate in the back room uh, cooking our veg and and um, uh, used to joke that we would would time our cooking with the uh, smoke alarm. Okay. <laughs> you, you, you know yeah. your... <laughs> oh, something for it. Oh, that's my lunch. <laughs> and, and so, um, 
this was a big upgrade in that um, uh, this keep it cooks the food and then keeps it warm, and, and so it doesn't degrade. Well, yes. it, it degrades a bit after three days if you forget to take enough <laughs> <laughs> the uh, uh, veggies uh, after two or three days in the sun. You know, they're, they're not very interesting. Here's, you can see there's some little sections of of, uh, of uh, water bottles here for spacers between the uh, um, the uh, tempered glass and, and the uh, uh, oh yeah sure and so the uh, polycarbonate so it's basically a, a thermal pane with a double double pane just two different types of and glazing we're into recycling so um, we've got uh, uh, about 15, 20 uh, black runner ducks that mm -hmm. run around and graze in our, our food forest here. Yeah, they gre greeted me. <laughs> and so um, uh, we eat a lot of eggs, and so just throw them in a bowl in a solar oven and crush them and then occasionally um, put them in the blender, break them down, and then uh, feed them back to the uh, to the ducks in their oh, feed sure. to, to um, as a Calcium supplement. And let's see, what else? Um, oh, then the door. So uh, for a long time, we just used a uh, piece of polyiso foam wrapped in, in, in a <laughs> towel. <laughs> and so finally, a couple of years ago, we upgraded to uh, this door. And um, the uh, insulation is, is two inches of, of uh, uh, cork. Um, I'd actually ordered like uh, one inch thick pieces, but they sent two inch. So we can work with this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, then that's covered with this uh, uh, copper uh, glazing, like you would use uh, you know, on the roof to, to sure. seal joints and such. And um, then uh, steel pipes going through the door. And so uh, the that uh, gives you the ability to adjust the ventilation coming into the uh, oven. And so when I use this as a, a solar uh, food dryer, and so uh, we've got about 80 different varieties of fruit here in our little lake or paradise. Um, and so uh, occasionally we have like, you know, fruit coming out of our ears, which is, you know, very attractive. Um, and so we can just slice it up, throw it on, on uh, sheet pans, and uh, dry it in a couple of days, and um, it's, it's shelf stable then for a number of years. Sure. Um, so by uh, having these um, uh, vent um, holes, uh, and so we can see what the temperature is inside, so we can just open you know, some uh, vent holes high and low and increase the airflow so that we get about 105 degrees, which is the ideal temperature for uh, drying uh, fruits and herbs and things like that, so that um, you get, um, uh, you don't degrade the, the good stuff, you know, the enzymes and vitamins and things like that. And so uh, we found that the, these corks with a, um, a little disc of uh, silicone on them sure. work really good to cover the uh, holes and easy to um, um, slide in and out but hold nicely. Um, these are actually corks from across the street. Uh, Ventura Spirits uh, oh, oh. has these fancy uh, fancy <laughs> liquor bottles with these, these I've seen them. corks. Yeah, went through many a bottle with that on the top. <laughs> and um, so it's recycled materials. We got it out of the, the dumpster and just had to buy the sheet silicone and cut it. And then, and then I like the window. My wife says, why do you need a window? <laughs> oh, and it's double pane, basically. You've got a little air gap, so it's a yeah. less... So, so these, these are one inch square, uh, or one foot square, um, tempered glass sheets that are used for these decorative um, uh, shelving units. Oh, yes. yes. And so, you know, they're um, nice handy size and good viewing area. And so you can look in and say, oh, okay, that's what we got in there. And so uh, you don't need to open 
the oven to to be able to check on sure. you know at least what's in there and then you can position the the thermometer you know in the window sure and you must have a combination like like the lower left and the upper right for mm-hmm. getting airflow for drying or something like that yeah. or how would you do that well I, I basically wanted some holes low and some high so uh, um, you got the the thermal cycling you got the the um, um, heat rises sure. and so there'll be more pressure um, on the upper ones for uh, the heat to uh, uh, escape and then if you have uh, ones low it will be introducing cool air that will kind of slide along the bottom of, sure. of the oven get heated and rise up and and say so you get a nice convective flow uh, so that uh, with uh, drying stuff it's really important to have some uh, good airflow to um, uh, carry away the moisture. Very nice. And when did you put this in, and how long did it take to, to build it? Oh, um, uh, we moved into the house in 2012. It was April of 2012. And uh, I think it was shortly after that that um, I was working on building it. It took uh, quite a while because um, had all these kind of complex uh, pieces of wood and kind of putting together and so on. Uh, when we framed out the house, I knew what I wanted, and and so we framed out the uh, um, uh, something that would be wide enough to be able to get the sheet pans in, and uh, tall enough to uh, allow for a good uh, slope for the sure. was it 37 degrees for our latitude, um, and um, uh, so that we had the the um, height of the um, far end, so you can get some pans over there, and then you know coming up from there um, with proper angle for the uh, collect the sun. I think it was a couple of weeks of uh, spare time that I spent uh, uh, assembling it. Sure. Did you have any, uh, you, you already knew how to do that, and so it was taken oh, care of, or um, did you get any help? We, we had a really good um, helper, uh, uh, Josh Freka, who uh, experienced framing carpenter and experienced roofer. And so uh, he made sure that you know, we had the proper flashing um, to uh, uh, direct the um, uh, water, you know, carry it from the, the side of the house uh, onto the, the uh, glazing surface sure. and then uh, the off to the end. One of the things that I um, uh, did find out is, is that the um, water was running off of the, the surface of the, the glass and then down the, the face. Uh, then it had covered in, in wood, but it, some of it got into the wood. And so, um, it uh, there's a little area that's rotten. That um, next year iteration, when I uh, redo the glazing, will be to have a piece of um, drip edge, as it's called. Uh, it's, it's like a um, just a like a V shape of um, uh, sheet metal. Like, generally galvanized iron, mm-hmm. and then it's got a little uh, bend at the bottom to uh, direct the water to drip off. So I'm going to put that underneath the, the top layer of glazing, and so it carries the water, and then it, it carries it down and away from the front edge of sure. the uh, solar oven. Every house so, in that one. <laughs> I think so. Um, yes. it, when we think about all the wild and crazy things we did with our house, um, with the rewiring wiring it to twice, you know, for 110 volt and then for 12 volt DC, um, the uh, uh, fiber rock uh, wall board with the um, uh, plaster veneer instead of paint, sure. um, no VOCs, um, lots of recycled wood, and um, uh, five sun tunnels uh, to bring the light into, you know, the back end of the house. Um, uh, 
nice south facing windows and all that. The the thing that we really appreciate the most is is the solar oven. Yeah. That it's it's just such a wonderful feature of our house, and and a wonderful wonderful example that if, if people just kind of think about, you know, design when they they're building their house or remodeling their house that um, uh, they should look at these things that. Um, will use less energy and not introduce toxic materials and give them you know a much better lifestyle so we do have a little cooktop here and um it uses so-called natural gas nay natural it's 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 yeah, no, you know it's fossil not. fuel and, and studies have shown that in houses where uh they use uh natural gas that uh, there's increased problems with uh, asthma and other respiratory yeah. illnesses. So uh, you know, you may spend you know, well, this was real expensive, gagging up on it, but you know, a couple hundred bucks on on a gas stove. But the valves that turn on and off the the um, the gas are like you know, uh, twenty five cent part, and they don't work that good. And so. Uh, in everyday use with um, uh, gas cooking, with gas heating, and uh, a gas dryer, and uh, other gas appliances, um, you're being poisoned. And so uh, going to solar energy, which is clean, and uh, at least so far free. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're going to work hard to find a way that charges for it. That that you know, um, oops, you got a better, better quality of, uh, better quality of power. Um, so I encourage everybody to um, think about what you're doing in your home and, and how you can have a lighter footprint on Mother Earth um, uh, by working with nature. So this is the outside of our uh, through the wall solar oven and so it, um, it looks really big on the inside but on the outside it's just like um, little box hanging on, on the side of the house like a like a flower box only with a window yeah, yeah. and so um, for light to get in the house we, we put a little window above it and um, uh, when we we're building the house uh, we framed in a hole um, that was big enough to be able to get um, cheap pans in and large pans in. And then, um, so uh, the main structural part of the uh, solar oven is a uh, half inch thick uh, external plywood with the uh, two inches of polyiso foam sandwiched in between. So it's strong and light. And then, so uh, the inside uh, panel of the plywood, then we uh, uh, put through the framed hole and then uh, screwed, um, put screws in through the side of the plywood into the framing. And so uh, structurally, it's very strong. I was a little concerned about it being um, uh, a little too heavy for the the side, so I, I put some uh, straps. Oh, here they are. Yeah. I put some straps oh, on the true. bottom to support um, a uh, uh, strut that would support it uh, 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 lower on the side of the house. Sure. But um, uh, it hasn't fallen off yet, so I don't think I need that. So again, uh, we have an interior uh, sheet of uh, tempered glass that is temperature resistant and so on. And then an external sheet of uh, polycarbonate. So this is, uh, polycarbonate has been on here, we put it in, in 2012. And so it's been in here um, a dozen years. And so the uh, polycarbonate has, has gotten a little cloudy but it still seems to work well. So um, uh, I'm going to see if I'm going to take this off soon and see if I can clean it so it's a, a little more clear and maybe consider you know, 
been an energy polycarbonate. Sure. Uh, that's more clear. Use this for another project. So uh, we've got uh, from the uh, galvanized iron uh, siding, we have a sheet of, uh, of um, angle iron that comes out. Uh, originally, we had it over the edge of the um, uh, top layer of glazing, but now it is folded up so that it carries the water uh, off to the sides and then on, onto the surface of the uh, um, corrugated galvanized iron. And so the one design change I would make is to use a piece of the angle iron, it's a kind of um, uh, something like 30 gauge galvanized iron that's in the shape of a V, but one edge has a little a bend in it to um, let the water drip off of the edge. So sure. I would uh, put that um, underneath the top layer of, of the glazing and bring that down so it uh, drops it onto the uh, gum of the uh, aluminum flashing that I used to cover the outside of the, uh, of the plywood as a weather you know, surface. And let's see, anything else? Uh, Oh, you know, I'm looking underneath it. Is that just an extension of cabinet space underneath that box, or right? So this uh, this is a nice um, cover for something, and so this is our um, RO filter. So uh, there's uh, uh, a pre-filter uh, uh, RO membrane filter and finishing filter. In this in this cabinet underneath here, so um, it uh, kind of protects back, keeps out of the rain, and uh, so uh, we don't have to worry about the um, IR filter leak, leaking inside of the house. Um, sure. There's a hole in the bottom of the cabinet if it leaks, it goes into the garden. Okay, thank you. That. Is that is stunning, and the size makes me think. We have a dining room window that's a big picture window, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking that the lower two feet, maybe? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we could fit one in there. Now, uh, a lot of people for special occasions will uh, go and sacrifice dead animals to the gods of indigestion <laughs> outside. I mean, uh, grilling. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so why... Why this location? Yeah. So um, uh, we moved into um, on, onto this site um, in 2004, and um, uh, we demoed the inside of the house, and we're uh, going to just upgrade the plumbing and wiring and, and drywall. If the county had other ideas. They uh, said we need to get um, um, uh, redo our conditional use permit and some other things, and so uh, three years and twenty thousand dollars later, you know, we were able to get permits, and then we need to re-roof some of the, uh, our um, dorm buildings, and so um, uh, so we had some time to think about uh, what we wanted in our green home here in the middle of the stinking oil field. And so uh, we watched where the sun hit the, uh, the building. And so it hit the building in the southeast corner. And that correlated very nicely with um, the Sapatia Bay uh, ideas of, of uh, ideal structure of houses that um, um, you should have the cooking in the southeast corner part of the building because that's where the, uh, the heat is. So you use heat for cooking. And so uh, we uh, uh, decided to move the, uh, the kitchen to the southeast corner and then it was a, a perfect place then um, because that's where the sun hits the, uh, the house 
consistently for longest period of time. And so the, the ideal place for the, the uh, solar cooker. And then a uh, nursery over here where we grow trees, help other people plant their food for us. And so uh, our main business is growing beneficial insects. And so we produce um, five million flies every day. And then we produce about two million fly, uh, fly parasites, these little wasps that feed on the pupal stage of the fly. And that's our main, half our business, main product that we sell, that we produce here. And then we also grow some lace on it and a uh, little ladybug that eat scale. And uh, then we distribute insects from other insect groups. So we have a, a uh, catalog of about 50 different insects, a dozen different mites, and some insect uh, eating fungi and some other things that help farmers um, control the cost without using anything that any can toxin. This is great. Thanks so much. Well, thank you. It's uh, really great to show off what we've done here and uh, in some small way encourage other people you know, to do more things in harmony with nature. So kind of one of the next things we want to build is um, a uh, solar still. Yes. That, um, you know, uh, if, uh, you know, when shit hits the fan, uh, that... Um, We've got groundwater here, but it's not good drinking water, yep. and so we can um, uh, use that to produce, you know, premium quality drinking water. Sure, and also uh, maybe like alcohol for for uh, kind of alternative <laughs> fuel. Yeah. And, uh, so the, the big um, industrial um, fuel alcohol things are it's boom bottle, but mm -hmm. on the farm scale, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But the, can plow your field with a bushel of corn or yep. something like that. You know. So our business is is growing the good bugs that eat the bad bugs, yes. and so we're encouraging farmers uh, to work with nature to produce you know, healthy food, fiber, medicine, and um, uh, instead of you know reverting to these these um, supposed quick fixes of using chemical fertilizers and chemical pesticides to produce food that doesn't have, um, has a very low uh, nutrient density and doesn't support healthy growth of people. So we can live a lot better life by working with nature. I remember reading somewhere where uh, they said that a weed is just a plant in the wrong place. Right, right. It's, it's, not, it's not that it's evil. Even the bad bugs, yeah. you know, the mosquitoes feed the bats, you know. Oh, yeah. and, uh, and that maybe that's your next iteration, bad farms up. <laughs> but you've got the, the bugs that take care of the ones, and they thrive on eating the bugs that, are, that shouldn't be eating the plants. Mm -hmm. um, and, but then they've got other places they can go to eat plants, <laughs> but, yeah. right? So, but I think you should mention that, the, the, just this week we have a, a special on uh, six packs of anteaters. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you mean like the actual, <laughs> the big panther in the anteater? It's a joke. Or, or, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, I wouldn't doubt it. I don't know where if, if the ants are in the wrong place, yeah. but you know, you we, we, do sell bat, we do sell bat houses and yeah. nest boxes. You know. Sure. That, that, you know, um, it's kind of hard to sell the animals, especially when they're native animals, you know, yeah. supposed to buy and sell native critters. Yeah. So there's, there's never these, these real simple environmental modifications that we can do to, to enhance the habitat you know, for these spiders. And returning it to the, the, the balance that was there 100 years, 200 years ago, yeah, yeah. And, and that has been disrupted by yeah. the introduction of chemicals and so forth, so, yeah. Yeah, let's see, so this is the um, 2,000 gallon uh, hot water storage tank. Okay. So on, on the roof of uh, this building and this building are um, 50 uh, solar uh, hot water panels. And so, um, some of them date back to the Carter administration when there was a tax rebate on, on the solar hot water panels. Yeah. And so we uh, picked up a, a 
a lot of the solar panels were free or very cheap, and so uh, we spent uh, about a hundred thousand dollars on on the setup. So our stimulus was when Enron uh, was playing around with gas prices, and they uh, suddenly went up was it four or five times, you know, the price that they they were, and so that gave us a heads up. We got to do something to uh, be able to heat our insect rearing rooms uh, and not rely on this this uh, fossil fuel energy. Um, no telling, you know, what kind of people are going to be playing games with the prices or with availability or uh, distribution and all all those other problems. And so uh, we went to a um, solar hydronic. Um, uh, uh, service person, Dexter Carpenter, uh, who had at that time about 30 years of experience putting in solar hydronic systems and say, put in a system for us. And he said, no, uh, I'm not employing anybody. Uh, I don't want to be the contractor. I'll be your coach. And, and so I thought, okay, we, we got a good crew of people that you know have time from um, after production you know to work on projects and especially in the off season you know from about uh, uh, September through uh, April you know uh, we have all this help that uh, uh, doesn't have much to do and so uh, with uh, Dexter's help uh, we designed the system and so uh, it's working. Every day that the sun shines, we're heating 10,000 square feet of insect growing rooms with uh, solar heated hot water. And so our uh, natural gas bill went from about $1,000 a month to about $50 to $100 a month, something like that. And we get better quality heat in the rooms. So we were using these, these gas, um, uh, room heaters, and so they, it was hot and dry, and we're always concerned about the um, uh, gas leaking and exploding or burning place down and, and all these other problems. And so uh, if the um, hot water leaks, it gets the floor wet. No big problems. And so this is the 2,000-gallon uh, um, storage tank. So um, it's a stainless steel tank and covered with uh, about uh, an inch and a half, two inches of, uh, of foam and then covered that with um, a sealer to, to uh, protect it from, uh, from the sun. And so uh, we have the hot water from the uh, solar panels coming into this tank. And then we have a uh, wood-fired boiler that supplements uh, the heat when um, it's raining, when uh, we get what's called June bloom around here, mm -hmm. where there's a heavy uh, fog. And so the uh, solar panels don't collect much heat. They still collect some, but, but not very much. And um, then we have a gas-fired um, water heater as a uh, actually tertiary backup. So our wood fire boiler, uh, we can uh, burn uh, wood, um, paper, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. And then it also has a, a oil uh, burner uh, part of it so we can uh, burn uh, cooking fat, you know, the, sure. the leftover fat, you know, from um, uh, deep fryers and that sort of thing. And um, so we've got the wood, uh, oil and then the uh, natural gas backup and so we're trying to figure out the next step of uh, some kind of a heat pump that would leverage the uh, uh, electrical heat um, electrical energy to uh, convert that in, into heat and so we're still working through that most of the the uh, uh, heat pump water heaters uh, have a tank and so uh, and complicates our, our plumbing and stuff like that. Okay, so here we are uh, at the uh, control center. So this is um, 
uh, the solar hydronic controls. Uh, so we've got um, um, sensors in the tank and uh, in the uh, wood fire boiler and so on. So uh, we've got a uh, one horsepower, uh, like a pool pump that pumps the water uh, from the storage tank up through the solar panels and then it comes back in uh, heated up and then we're storing the heat in this tank and then we're also circulating the, the heat uh, the water in the tank that's heated up uh, through uh, the circulator pump that uh, takes it uh, over to some manifolds where we have uh, solenoid valves that uh, distribute the heat to the rooms where it's needed. In. And so uh, on this side we have the uh, wood-fired boiler. So we can uh, use wood. We've got several tree trimmers trained to drop off wood chips that we use for, for mulching in the garden and then wood that we uh, cut and dry and then uh, we can fill the, uh, the wood fire boiler um, which has a uh, supplemental oil burner so we can burn french fryer fat. Um, so we've got uh, three levels of, of um, uh, backup for the, the solar heat. Can go one more place? Over to the other side of the wall. Here's the uh, ramp pump. I'm hoping to get oh. into, the, uh, into the creek here. We put a little dam in. Sure. We've got about three foot of fall so that uh, we can uh, supposedly pump water up you know, using the flowing water sure. about 15 feet yep. up into the garden area. So this is, every room has different aromas. Ooh. So this one is predominantly yeast. This is the fly adult room. So we have um, adult flies. So we grow five million flies every day. So if you're gonna grow an insect, you have to grow all the life stages. So there's egg, larva, pupa, and adult. And so, the microphone over here. Sure. So each one of these cages has 60,000 uh, flies in it. And uh, so, um, uh, bring in the fly pupae, let them emerge like them, and they uh, make whoopee, and then they, <laughs> they make babies, and, and it goes into the next room. Sure. So we've got the two cultures, the fly culture and then the fly parasite culture that we need to sequence. And so we have the uh, fly parasites available when uh, farmers want to, uh, 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 when they see the, the flies coming in in the springtime and they want to um, uh, control the flies using our fly parasite wasp. So then, then, so this is our, the production side, and then here's the uh, solar hydronic side. So this is kind of like our industrial art exhibit. And so we uh, put together these uh, manifolds. And when we were putting the manifolds together, uh, the price of copper went way up. So each one of these, these uh, T's cost about uh, 30 bucks each or something like that. So it was, you know, it was, it was instead of investing in, in silver and gold, we invested in copper. <laughs> <laughs> so so we've got the, um, this is the, see the arrows here. Sure. Uh, so this is the, the um, uh, heated water coming in uh, from the tank. Uh, and then uh, it goes through the loop uh, to the different rooms, comes back, and then we have this solenoid valve then that turns on and off, uh, 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 switched by the thermostat in each of the rooms. And so uh, when the room is calling for heat, uh, it turns on the solenoid valve. And so the pump is running all the time. And so 
uh, the hot water will flow uh, through the, uh, the pipes uh, to the room. So we get uh, kind of a low grade heat so it's, it gets up around um, 120 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And so um, uh, a lot of the conventional hydronic heating systems are um, uh, for about 180 degree sure. temperature heat. And so um, you need right around 30 degrees uh, over your, um, your target room temperature to push the heat, you know, um, out of the water into the room. And so uh, most of our rooms we're, we're trying to get about 80 degrees. Uh, different temperatures or different cultures. Sure. So we, we're shooting for 80, 85 degrees in the fly adult room and the maggot rooms and some of the uh, fly parasite rooms just 75 degrees. And so we don't need uh, much heat in those rooms. So everything, everybody gets their own uh, sure. conditions. Sure. And so uh, we put the hydronic uh, baseboard heaters all the way around the room and found we were able to get um, uh, the temperature we need with the 120 degree water. These are the um, uh, pipes coming off of the roof of, of this building. Uh, coming into the medical team, we've got them in the, uh, the, the uh, solar panels, solar hot water panels in, in banks of uh, about uh, six panels each, uh, so that we get good uh, flow of water through them. And so um, uh, that's the heat coming off of the roof, and then we have another set of manifolds for the uh, heat coming off of the next building. And so uh, we have the ability to expand the, um, uh, the system a little bit if we want to. So it was a big investment, but um, now that we have the investment, we just need to repair things here and there occasionally. Um, there's been a couple of leaks of of uh, water lines, uh, one from um, being chewed on, one from being uh, banged, um, uh, was something sharp. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, no major trauma, just sure. patch, patch, yes. patch the, uh, <laughs> the pipe and, and yeah. so on. And then we can go and see, uh, go across the way and sure. see the panels on the yeah. roof. Yeah. Yeah. That one. So these are the uh, solar panels on the roof. And so we've got, uh, I think it's 50 um, solid hot water panels. And most of them are like four foot by eight foot uh, that um, uh, were put up you know, um, during the Carter administration when there was a soil tax rebate. So we um, uh, got the solar panels in, we pressurized them with uh, water from a garden hose and um, uh, where there's leaks, you could easily see where the leaks are. So, so it's, it's, it's real simple technology. technology. Um, it's, it's a, a box, box with insulation, insulation on the back, back some copper pipe, pipe that goes back and forth, forth. Sure. and um, uh, some, some solar, solar glazing on the top. top then. Yeah. So, so real simple. Uh, we have to use uh, copper pipe wherever uh, the pipes are exposed as the uh, uh, pack tubing only lasts for a year or two. Again, it's it's a um, basically real simple. Just uh, collect the heat from the sun and then uh, put that in the tank to store the heat and then um, distribute it. Sure. To the room. Okay. Yes. In fact, I'll let you smell the uh, yeah. the maggot room here. And so this is um, this is one of the uh, uh, boundary breaking exercises here. Uh, the rites of passage uh -oh. is uh, being able to hold some uh, maggots. There's a lot of life there. Oh, the, 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 the squirming is. Uh, yeah. So, probably what, about 500 or 1,000 in there, right? Yeah. Wow. 
So um, when we would go to fairs and shows and stuff like that, we'll take a, a little tray of maggots and the kids will hold them. Sure. And uh, it's kind of fun to see the reaction, then be a little standoffish, and then we'll see other people playing with them. And uh, they'll get in there and be playing with them. And, they look over at the parents and they're turning green, you know. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. okay. You know, well, eat, eaten by some kind of insect. So. Yeah. <laughs> so these are uh, squash. Mm -hmm. and there's something wrong with them. <laughs> so, so the scaly stuff is actually a scale insect. Oh. And so uh, it's passed on a number of different crops. Um, a big passed on, on uh, citrus. And so then we grow these little ladybugs that eat the, uh, eat the scale, and so you see the uh, adult ladybugs here, and then these are the larva ladybugs. So we can set the camera there and get, get a picture of the two of us here. Uh, there we go. Yes. Okay. All right. okay. Hey. <laughs> so here we are in the Lindoris room. So Lindoris is a little ladybug that eats scale. So if you got a scale as a pest, you need to invite these guys over for dinner. They will love to clean up the scale. So these are squash, you know, in particular butternut squash. And there's a scaly stuff on the squash, which is a scale insect, a tiny insect that has a little uh, a wax um, hat, you know, like, a, like a hard hat um, uh, over them. And the ladybugs, and they're kind of hard to see. They're a little tiny eighth inch uh, black, uh, Ladybugs, and then the um, both the adult and the larvae feed on, on the uh, scale, and so we're one of the sole producers of these in the country, and um, they are uh, uh, really useful for citrus, um, Christmas trees, and uh, zoos and conservatories. Because they all get that kind of scale? Yeah, well, they get those, different those kinds of scale. These okay. are, you know, ladybugs are in particular really good for what's called hard scale. It doesn't have too much um, honeydew, the sugary poop. Oh, from true. Okay. That's Highway 33, yeah. and so we call this our Back 33. Sure. It's Caltrans land, so we uh, cleaned up the weeds and then planted out as a uh, food forest. We so had a lot of fruit trees <laughs> and uh, compost back there. And so. sure. uh, we got uh, 27 cargo shipping containers. We used to grow moths uh, to host uh, uh, lace wing and trick grandma production. Mm -hmm. And so uh, now we're mainly using them for storage and some production work. Yeah, it's a garden. This is an interesting plant. Oh, Santa. Uh, it's a relative of. You want to nibble on this? Sure. It's a relative of uh, uh, black pepper. Mm, and, yeah, um, I tasted it. One of the names for it is uh, root beer leaf. Mm -hmm. So this is the little wasp that we produce. And so um, you can see how small they are. They're not big, scary wasps. This little, is adult? Yeah, these That's are the adults. Okay. They're little tiny wasps. They don't bite or sting. And um, um, their uh, main mission in life is to reproduce. And so um, mama wasps lays her egg in the, uh, the pupa stage of the fly. And so a little wasp comes out of that pupa instead of a fly. So you use for fly control around animals, um, riding stables, um, um, compost yards, uh, slaughterhouses, all kinds of picturesque places like that. So you can see the glint off of the wings of the wasp. So they're yeah. like little teeny tiny ants, um, but they're wasps. 
Denise. Mm-hmm. to the bug farm. <laughs> so we yeah. grow the good bugs and eat the bad bugs. And I held in my hand probably a thousand maggots. So I, probably, I, know, the, I know the feeling a uh, drill sergeant has when he calls 500 guys, maggots! <laughs> <laughs> okay.